In today's video, I'm going to be repairing the condenser fan on my Rheem RHEEM 5 ton AC unit. I'm going to give you a little bit of background first. So, we had one hot day so far this year. So, you know, early on in the season, it's a good idea to turn on your central AC units, go in the attic, check the air handlers, make sure that they're not dripping down into the insulation and making sure that, you know, they're not going to drip down onto the drywall below. It's a good idea to check or replace your filters for your air handler units. You should do that monthly. And then I came outside to check on both these units and I heard both the compressors were running, but the fan was running on the little unit and the fan was not running on the big unit. Now, typically when your condenser fan is not spinning, usually it would be a capacitor. This unit is a little bit different. So when I realized that the condenser fan was not operating, the first thing I did, I went to the breaker box right here and I shut off power. Also, you gotta be careful when you start going inside these things, especially the capacitors, because the capacitors are designed to hold charges. Normally, on modern units, that charge will dissipate as soon as you shut off the power, but on some units, the charge will remain in that capacitor and it could potentially give you a pretty nasty shock, so just be careful. So I shut off the power and then I started snooping around in here. I was expecting to see some obvious signs of failure to the capacitor. Normally when these capacitors fail, you'll see some oil start to leak out. They'll start to expand either on the sides or on the bottoms. And I didn't notice any expansion. Also what struck me as interesting, this capacitor only has two inlets into it. So one obviously supplies the charge to the capacitor and the other one actually goes straight to the uh, compressor motor. So this capacitor has nothing to do with the fan. So, also while I was in here, I just made sure that there weren't any chewed up wires or anything like that because that's also really common. You know, in the winter time, these little critters are looking to find a nice dry place to survive the winter. So they'll build nests in here, they'll nibble on the wires, which there was a nest in here, there was some nibbling on the wires, but nothing that was really causing my issue. So the next thing I did after realizing that it was not related to the capacitor is I turned this breaker back on you know, understanding that I need to be careful now because this is live. And then I also went in the house and I turned the thermostat down. So the thermostat was then calling for this unit to turn on. There's two signal wires that feed into this unit that will signal it to come on, you know. So when you turn down the thermostat and it goes below that set point, it sends an electrical current through those two signal wires for this unit to turn on. So I started probing around with my voltage tester and I found out that I had 230 coming in and that the signal wires were signaling for the unit to come on. Hmm. After checking everything in the electrical access panel, I decided to get closer to the motor and, and see what's going on here. So I took off the motor, I unplugged it, and then I came up to this plug right here and I started probing around here. I figure, well, there's got to be an issue between the electrical panel to the motor. So let's check the connector and see if it's from the connector back. So with this connector, there are five wires that are connected from this connector to the motor. One is green, green is your ground. And then you have a blue, that's 120 AC. And you also have a yellow, that's 120 AC. And then you also have a brown and black. And those are your signaling wires. They instruct the motor to turn on. I forget if they're AC or DC, but I do remember that when I checked them with my voltmeter that I was getting current, proper current going through those. So I figure, well, it can only be a motor. So I bought a motor. It's sitting in the garage. Let's switch over the fan shroud, put it back in the unit and see if we can't get this thing up and running. Here's the new motor and here's the old motor. What stinks is this unit actually has a 10 year warranty, but since I bought the house and I bought the unit, I've been unable to locate the paperwork from the original owner who they had this installed by and any of the paperwork. So I had to pay for this out of pocket. This ended up being like $450 for the motor. So with these motors, these are motors and they have built in electronic control modules. And within the electronic control modules, there is their own capacitor in there. So the capacitor in this motor, once it goes, it's not serviceable, which stinks. You gotta buy the whole motor and the electronic control control module, which, you know, they come as one piece. It, it just stinks that you can't just go into your machine and replace the capacitor. You gotta replace the whole motor. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So I was able to get the fan off. What I would recommend doing, especially if you have some time and this ends up being your problem, 
when the fan is sitting on the shaft, loosen up this set bolt right here and just spray some penetrating oil in there. I let that sat for a couple days. And then I actually took a ball joint fork and I went in here and I was actually able to work the fan right off and that came off pretty easy so I was happy about that. Now, let me switch this shroud over onto the new motor and we'll put the fan on the new motor. We'll take it over and we'll give it a test. So here's a quick tip before you take this thing apart or anything else you want to take apart and you're not 100% sure how it goes back together. Before I disassembled this, I took some pictures of the unit and one question I had in mind, which hopefully you can see that on my phone, was how high does the fan sit on the motor output shaft? And it actually sits flush with the top of this shaft. And also another important thing to note upon one side of this output shaft is flat ground and that is where our set screw screws onto so when the motor spins the fan doesn't slip but but anyway just having a smartphone and being able to take pictures of things before you take them apart can save you a lot of headache and confusion when you're reassembling things so that's just a good little life tip there Alright, let's go through this thing back on the unit and see if we can get her working again. Alright, so I have this thing back installed. Just a really important thing to note upon if you're replacing the fan motor on your condenser. When you put it all back together, keep a very close eye on the wiring. What I'd recommend you doing is taking a stick, sticking it through this shroud, and spin the fan a couple times and see if they come close to hitting the wires that either go to the fan or the compressor. The first time I spun this around with the stick, I noticed that everything was very close so what I did I came over to the electrical junction box and I just pulled the wires out away from the fan a bit zip tied them up I also used a piece of split wire loom um, I'm kind of disappointed that when they build these things they don't use more wire loom or something to protect the wires themselves because uh, what I'm noticing all these wires go over sharp edges and you know, I'm sure with the, the compressor and the fan on, you know, those wires vibrate a little bit, so it's almost like they're designed to fail. Well, yeah. All right, I'm going to turn the power back on. We'll turn down the thermostat, and let's see if this fixed my issue. And I would call this a successful repair. The motor's running, it's quiet, it seems balanced, no weird noises or vibrations. Uh, the wires are not coming in contact with the fan blades and also I can hear the compressor running right now so we should be good to go for the summer. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.